Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Points of Articulation. My name's Dave, and if you're new to the channel, welcome, everybody. Today, I'm looking at the Star Wars Armada Rogues and Villains Expansion Pack, released in 2015. This expansion features eight unique ships, and for the first time, it has ships from both the Rebel and Imperial factions of Armada, which we've never seen yet. We have four Rebel ships and four Imperial. And as we all know by now, these ships have no paint whatsoever. Instead, they're in molded plastic. So for the Rebels, we have a nice tan, and for the Empire, we have a dark gray. So I have a lot to cover and we all know how my videos go by now. We're going to look at the tokens, the cards, check out the stand, look at the beautiful molds, compare them to some other pieces, and then we'll be done. So let's get moving. And now it's time for my favorite part of these videos to dial token roll call. First up, 8 defense tokens, 8 squadron ID tokens, 8 activation sliders, and finally 8 squadron discs, which are double sided. So that does it for all the tokens, now let's take a quick look at the cards. Alright, let's take a look at the 16 unique squadron cards. Now, just like in all my videos, I will go over the name of the card. If you would like to pause the video to read the stats and paragraph below, by all means, go right ahead and continue when you're done. First up, we have the YT-1300 Freighter, Han Solo, the YT-2400, Dash Rendar, the HWK-290 or the Hawk-290, Jan Ors. Next, we have the Scourge H-6 Bomber, Nim, the Fire Spray 31, Boba Fett, Jumpmaster 5000, Dangar, Next, we have the Aggressor Assault Fighter, IG-88, the YV-666, and finally, Bosk. So that does it for all the cards in this set, so now let's take a quick look at the stand. And now for stand assembly, everybody should be pros at this by now. If you've been watching all my videos, take your cardboard, put it on the base, make sure the half circle is facing up. Take your squadron disc, take this piece, and that plugs into the half circle lock that in so now everything is secure grab your little extender here grab your ship now be gentle these can be fragile slide it in like so and just like that everybody you're good to go all right so let's start looking at the molds first up we have the yt 1300 freighter i just want to call it the millennium falcon it was first seen in star wars episode 4 a new hope and for its size, it's just under three quarters of an inch in length. It may sound small, but trust me, everybody, it's one of the biggest ships in the set. And as we can see here, I'll grab my pen. This ship has some beautiful detailing on here. Everything's there that should be. We have our mandibles, our cockpit with recessed windows. You can see the paneling and line work all throughout. A little recess in the back right here with some doodads in there. Fantastic stuff. Turn on the ship, we have our docking ring. Looking good. Our engines looking fantastic. You can see the raised sections on the top and bottom. Pretty good. Turning it again. We have another recess right here. Pretty cool. Our other docking ring. And more detailing on the sides. Looking at the top of the vessel, we have our heat exhaust vents in the back, all six of them. Our quad laser cannon right here. Tons of detailing throughout the top of this vessel. And of course our sensor dish. All in all, a beautiful looking ship. Now for the bottom section of this bad boy. Again, look at all the detailing on here. We have our boarding ramp, which should be right here. And tons of little details. Look at all that. Fantastic stuff. Turning it by the engines. Beautifully detailed, an excellent piece in my opinion. Well done. Up next, we have the YT-2400 Freighter, best known as the Outrider, which was first seen in Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, the novel. And this is one of my favorite ships, and it's a little smaller than the Falcon. We're looking at a tad over one quarter of an inch long. Very small, but again, very nicely detailed, looking at all the line work and paneling. Fantastic job. We have our turret at the top. You can see the two barrels there. Our cockpit, which is nicely done. The main body looks good with the recess work. We have our docking ring right here. Looking good. Turning the ship around. 
We have our beautifully molded engine. And then we have our pylons attaching to the cockpit section. And look at that. Fantastic work. We have our heat exhaust vents. Beautifully done. Now in here should be the boarding ramp. It opens up. If you ever played Shadows of the Empire, it's a pretty good game. And we get to see this bad boy in action quite a few times. For the bottom of the ship, we have our bottom turret looking good. And look at all this work here. Beautifully done. Everything's there that should be for something so small. Just a fantastic job. You know, for being one of my favorite ships in the Star Wars universe, I'm glad Fantasy Flight Games made it in this type of scale. It just goes so well with the Falcon. Nice job. Next up, we have the Fire Spray 31 Interceptor, most well known as Slave 1, Boba Fett's ship. This vessel was first seen in Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. And for its size, it's under a quarter of an inch in length. It's very, very small. But what are you going to do? It's very nicely detailed, as you can see. Everything's there. We have our stabilizer fins, our cockpit, nice detailing going around the sides. On the bottom, we have our rotating twin blaster cannons, which look amazing. The boarding ramp should be right here. Of course, we have our peg for the stand. But on the back, look at all this. This is beautiful work, in my opinion. We have our engine section. All this nice recessed work. Beautiful job. Now we have some plastic hanging off the bottoms here. Guess I should hit that with an X-Acto knife. But what are you going to do? Besides that, a beautifully done ship. Very nicely detailed. Up next we have the Aggressor Assault Fighter, which is most well known for being IG-88's vessel, the IG-2000, which was first seen in the comic Shadows of the Empire. And for the size, this ship is just over half an inch in length. So not the biggest, but not the smallest by any means. And it does have a lot going on. Now for the main parts, we have our cockpit, if you want to call it that, in the front. Laser cannons on the tips here. Now, as a kid, I always thought these were robotic arms. I guess technically they are, but on the tips, they have thrusters, so this can do amazing maneuvers. So much so that if a human was in here, the force of all the maneuvers that this could do would kill the pilot. Luckily, IG-88 is a robot, so they don't have to worry about that. And in the back, we have our engine section. All in all, pretty nice. It does have some beautiful detailing, as you can see on the arm here. Fantastically done. On the top, you can see some great design work here. Pretty cool. Again, a little extra plastic hanging off, but not a big deal. And for the bottom of the vessel... You can see some great design work here. Beautiful stuff. And then two recesses. All in all, a pretty nice looking ship. For the next vessel, we have the Jumpmaster 5000, most well known for being Dangar's ship, the Punishing One. The ship was first seen in the novel Payback, The Tale of Dangar, and for its size, it's the same as the Aggressor Assault Fighter, which is about half an inch in length. So I'm not too knowledgeable of the ship. I do have a lot of diagrams and stuff. But uh, I've never really read the books or anything like that when it comes to the different bounty hunter vessels. But I do know this. Right here should be some sort of turret. I believe this is it. It looks like four different barrels there. So we have a quad turret. Some beautiful design work here and line work recesses. We have our cockpit. The holding bay and everything should be a little bit of back at it. And then of course... We have our engines, which are nicely done. A very unique looking ship, if I do say so myself. We can see some beautiful work here. And I like these rectangle pieces. I think those came out really good. Pretty nice. Now for the bottom of the ship, we don't have much to talk about, but there is some line work and little modules here and there. Oh no, a very unique ship, but a cool one. Pretty cool. Up next, we have the YV-666, better known as the Houndstooth, Bosca's vessel. First seen in the prize pelt, The Tale of Box, which is a novel. For the size of this ship, it's a little over three quarters of an inch in length. Now for the main parts of this vessel, which is very unique, uh, right here should be the cockpit, 
which we can see some extra plastic there, but besides that, just look at the mold here. Very nice, very unique. Uh, down here should be uh, laser cannons, and right here in the front should be missile launchers. So that's pretty interesting. And in the back, we have our engine section. Now, in the Clone Wars and other media, these wings can tilt up when it lands, and then they tilt like you see here when it flies. So, pretty cool. On those wings and aft section, you can see some beautiful design work here. Magnificent. We'll get a top view in a couple seconds. Here's the side. Looking good. I like the recess here and little modules. And then in the front, we have some nice molding going around here. Now for the bottom, it's really flat. We have some seam lines, little hang off from the molding process, our peg. Turn it around, we do have some nice detail in here for the aft wings. Really good. And we have our engines. Looking fantastic. At the top of the ship, look at all this. I love the wings right here. These recesses. Fantastic stuff. Some beautiful molding. And the top of the ship has some nice designs on here, as you can see. Well done. Another cool piece to add to the collection. Up next, we have a very unique ship, the HWK-290 Freighter, or the Hawk-290, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Now, this ship was made famous in the Star Wars video game, Star Wars Dark Forces, and it featured the pilot Jan Ors, Kyle Katan, and the ship's name was the Moldy Crow. And I never played Dark Forces, I played its sequel, Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, which was an amazing expanded universe story. Really good stuff. But anyway, to the size of the ship, we're looking at a tad over half an inch in length. And as you can see, it has a lot going on here. In the front, we have our nice cockpit section with all recessed windows. Looking good. This circle right at the top, this is a docking ring, and you can see all the little modules there. We'll look at the top in a bit. On the sides here, these are all engines, and I always thought these were weapons on the wings, but they're not. They're just different antenna and sensors and stuff like that. Looking at the back, we have all our engine sections here, and they look pretty good. Nicely molded. I like the aft right here. Very nice. Looking at the top of the ship, you can see all the nice little details here. Fantastic stuff. Looking at the bottom, which might be my favorite part. Just because it has a turret. Right here we have two barrels. And that's pretty awesome. We got a little mold in here. You know there's not much to write about. But I do like turrets. I don't know why. They just look cool. Looking at the bottom. Turning it around. It's completely flat. There's nothing here. But besides that. The top more than makes up for it. Another great looking vessel for the set. And finally, we have the Scourge H6 Bomber, first seen in Star Wars Starfighter. Never really played that game at all. But for the size of the ship, it's under a half inch in length. But it's pretty cool nonetheless. As we can see, it's molded pretty nice. We have some beautiful details here. Right here is the cockpit. In the back, we have a uh, twin laser turret, I believe. Then on the sides, we have laser cannons. I know this thing has some missile launchers as well fantastic looking ship it's very simplistic very original trilogy-esque but really cool nonetheless and then in the back we have our engine section which nothing is flat everything has a uh, different mold in here and there as we can see at the top here beautifully done we have some nice recessed areas paneling here and there just another great ship looking at the bottom Look at the detail in here, little mold and mishap there, but the rest of it is pretty cool. I love the circles with the lines extending, pretty cool. And then the aft section where the engines are, an awesome touch. I like the design of this. And I know uh, X-Wing miniatures have a lot of these ships in a larger scale, so I'm going to have to start looking at them more. But pretty cool, another great ship for the set. So that does it for all the ships in this set, so now let's compare them. And now for a quick size comparison with the Star Wars Armada Rogues and Villains expansion pack seen throughout the center. On the right hand side we have the Star Wars Armada GR-75s or the Rebel Transports. And everybody knows how small the flotillas are so you can see the size comparison between them. 
And finally, on the left-hand side, we have the Hot Wheels Star Wars TIE Fighter. And that does it today for my review of the Star Wars Armada Rogues and Villains Expansion Pack released in 2015. In this set, you get everything you need to add four unique ships to your particular faction of Armada, including tokens, cards, bases, and beautifully molded ships. Now for the mold of these vessels, they are magnificent for the size. These things are beautiful, recesses, paneling, little modules, fins, laser cannons, everything's there that should be, and Fantasy Flight Games did an amazing job here. Now for the paint, big shocker, there is none. But if you're good at painting or customization, go for it because the possibilities are endless with these. Now I really like this expansion and it's not just because of the greatly done ships from an economic standpoint. For example, if I play Rebels and my friend plays Empire, instead of me pumping out $17 or so to get this expansion, I could split the price with my friend, making it cheaper for me and him, so I love that ability about this set. So before I go, I want to begin something new in every video. I'm going to try my best to ask a Star Wars question. If you know the answer, let me know in the comments below. Today's question is, for how long are creatures swallowed by the Sarlacc digest it for? Again, if you know it, let me know in the comments below. So that's everything I have to say about this awesome set today. I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see new reviews every Thursday, subscribe. Again, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time. Bye, everybody.